We begin this news hour in Senegal, where opposition leader Usman Sonko has been acquitted of rape charges. However, a court has sentenced him to two years in prison for corrupting youth. Sonko was accused of raping a woman in 2021. His detention has led to weeks of violent protests and widespread unrest. Let's go live now to Nicholas Hark in Dhaka. And uh, Nicholas, he, he's been acquitted, but he could still face prison time. Can you just run us through the charges and what happened in court? Well, essentially, he has been... The rape charges have been... He's acquitted from the rape charges, as you explained, but he will still spend time in prison. He's likely to spend tonight in prison because the judge after the evidence that was brought to court last week by the accuser, Ajisar, um, um, convicted Usman Sonko of conspir conspiracy of a minor, because Ajisar, the, the, the person that has, has accused um, Usman Sonko of rape, was under the age of 21 when the, when the events took place. Now, as the conviction was read out, there was utter calm on the streets of the capital. But look at it now. I'm on one of the main avenues. Behind me, all the way down this avenue, is where Usman Sonko lives. And I'm just going to rotate around. You can see the amount of security forces and police around. And at the very end of this road is where the courthouse and the jail is. We've been hearing loud bangs, tear gas, throughout these roads adjacent to this road. And in the next couple of hours, we expect Usman Sonko to be picked up from his home and brought to jail. Tom? Nick, I, I guess there's a tension there, uh, especially around security. What is the fear, uh, especially with his supporters, uh, when or if that does happen? Well, we are in one of the strongholds of Usman Sonko, it's the neighborhood of the Medina. And I just want you to see what's happening around me. There's, there's, there's people in the neighborhoods waiting and police in heavy riot gear. And you can see there's been rocks being thrown around. There's clashes happening at sporadic moments. It's not just here in this neighborhood in, Medi in the Medina, but even further out, you can see in the distance billowing in the clouds, um, um, tear gas has been thrown. So there's clashes around. They don't want to see Usman Sonko in jail. They say that the conviction was politically motivated, that Usman, the, the, the charges are false, that the, the woman that accuses him of rape was paid by the government. They see this as, they see that the, the justice system as being corrupt. Now, uh, Maki Sal, the president and the government, has explicitly said that they, their role is to maintain law and order, and this is a criminal matter between two private citizens. But for many here, it isn't. It's about politics. It's about the upcoming presidential elections of February 2024. Tom? Okay, thank you so much for that update. That's Nicholas Haag for us in Dakar. Well, let's bring in Adama Gay. He is a Senegalese author and journalist. He is also a former director of information at ECOWAS. He joins us from Dusseldorf in Germany. Thank you very much for being on this news hour. I guess, first and foremost, what is your reaction to these verdicts? This is very sad. It's a very sad day for Senegal's democracy. Senegal was not known for uh, dirty politics, but that is what we are witnessing now. And uh, this may uh, uh, usher in a lot of tensions as we move towards the 2024 presidential elections. Now we are confronted with really a very serious crisis, political crisis, and the government and the opposition are at odds with what they've been calling for, political dialogue. Yesterday, uh, the president of Senegal opened a political dialogue for people to find a peaceful solution to the challenges of the country. And the opposition, under the forces of 24, decided to call a dialogue for the people. But ultimately, what we see is a confrontation. It is not good. It doesn't signal a good thing for Senegal's democracy. Mm. What are the implications here? And, and what are you expecting uh, from Sonko's supporters uh, today and in, in the days ahead? We are uh, going into a really a, an arm uh, wrestling uh, between the opposition, the youth, and the government. 
The government is adamant about maintaining law and order. It will try to abide by the decision made by the justice, and this is clearly a decision that is somehow masterminded and adopted by the government, because the justice in Senegal is clearly controlled by the uh, executive. Uh, hundreds of people have been arrested and are under uh, jail uh, terms in Senegal. Mm. And on the other hand, we have the people in the opposition and Mr. Sonko and his followers who had refused the dialogue called for by Macky Sall, who is trying to find a way of exiting peacefully from power. People expect him to be pursued because a lot of uh, wrongdoings under his leadership. On the other hand, uh, the opposition now, and Mr. Sonko in particular, find himself in a position where he may be blackmailed into going into dialogue, into accepting what the president of Senegal wants. But the last resort may be, unfortunately for Senegal, to witness what never has happened in the country, namely an arbitrage by the military, because the more we see the political forces fighting one another, creating an economic situation that is not going well, you may run the risk of having a third force, the military, namely, coming out and saying, enough is enough, we must stop this, because Senegal should not go down the drain like many Western mm. African countries that have been experiencing a military coup and the likes. I mean, so do you really think there is a risk now, a real risk of a military coup in Senegal? Look, openly, people are calling for it, unfortunately. Senegal was known to be the really the uh, uh, leader in terms of democratic process, freedom of opinion, freedom of expression, and the multi-party political system. We have had that even before the independence of the country in 1960. And in 1974, after a period of single-party rule, like many African countries, we have had multi-party system, multi-party election, and we have had two peaceful democratic transition. Mm. So Senegal was seen as a beacon of democracy across the world when it comes to Africa. That's something that is foregone. It's a spent force. And the risk is indeed, because the military forces have been asked to remain in the barrack, mainly because there was an agreement that the politics would be done peacefully in terms of managing the economy, in okay. terms of providing good governance and rule of law. Unfortunately, that is no longer the case. The military forces mm. are no longer under the uh, diktat of the uh, civilians to remain into the barracks. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, that is Adama Gay for us, Senegalese author and journalist. Thank okay. you.